And one thing with autoimmune hepatitis, because of the expansive nature of, of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as an epidemic in the country, if you get the autoimmune markers in patients that have non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH, about 20% of them will have positive autoimmune markers. One of the only ways you can actually discern this is with liver biopsy. Um, and then also other contributing factors. Does the patient have an autoimmune disease? Is the patient overweight with an elevated BMI or metabolic syndrome? So these are only subtle things. The problem is people can also have autoimmune hepatitis and fatty liver. So again, it only uh, intensifies the importance of, of probably getting to see a hepatologist that has expertise in delineating these entities. So as of right now, to my knowledge, nobody else is doing this approach. We've seen a push in the clinical trials front that maybe advertising for clinical trials through social media may be an approach. However, someone that's looking for pat disease pathogenesis questions not necessarily being done this way, and they're, they're kind of depending on their institution, but also collaborations with the surrounding institutions. But again, how big is that even when you compare it to the continental United States and Canada? We want to grow, and we want to engage as many people, because really the, the theoretic aims of not only the research network, but our national society, the AIHA, is patient support, fellowship, interaction, and knowledge. And so ultimately, the bigger we can get, the more we actually can start to study um, with a greater degree of, of satisfaction and knowing that the results we find are significant. Ultimately though, um, we need funding. And so essentially by, by doing outreach this way, we, we hope to kind of garner this, this organization for growth to continue to provide education. Um, but also in theory, we'd, we'd like to be able to support our own research through it as well. Much like other rare diseases that have these type of communities or support groups, they actually are able to develop grants for people outside the group to apply for and therefore uh, award people with opportunities to further uh, the disease knowledge. So that's really where we'd like to go. This disease has been stagnant since really the early 90s. And again, another reason that we are uh, fulfilling this unmet need in terms of research. Ultimately, the, the research has been limited by expertise, um, patient numbers, and funding. And again, three big things that, at least with our platform, I think we can uh, get, get around. So research for autoimmune hepatitis is paramount. We must understand this condition better. And the way we need to do it is by patient number. With the Autoimmune Hepatitis Research Network on Facebook, we are able to recruit patients to be involved in AIH research. This includes the, comp the completion of epidemiology uh, surveys, but also the acquisition of DNA through saliva samples. With this, we can actually start to understand pathogenesis, so what causes this disease, but also maybe identify pathways that are important to the disease that we can actually target for treatment. By finding this on the uh, Autoimmune Hepatitis Research Network through Facebook, we actually have our coordinator's name available. You can do it through direct email and or his con direct contact number. Once that's initiated, um, our coordinator will contact that individual. We'll go through the inclusion exclusion criteria, and if a patient satisfies those, we will then directly ma mail the uh, informed consent along with the epi questionnaires, but also the saliva kits. So this is patient initiated. However, with physicians knowing about this and then again referring their own patients to say, hey, there is a great resource on Facebook, it's another way to grow our numbers.